Hi. So this is my bust of uh, Van Gogh, uh, without a beard yet and without hair. Um, just so you can see what Van Gogh may have looked like without a beard. Now how did I construct this image? Well, I took photographs of Van Gogh as a youth. Uh, also paintings of him by his contemporaries, uh, including Toulouse-Lautrec. And also his own self-portraits of which there were numerous, um, so both painted in Paris and in the south of France in Arles and uh, I then went through all these images looking for common aspects because you'll find that they all have a variety of features, uh, of lengths of features, there's very little common ground between them and there's very few where he doesn't actually have a beard here's here's one example and another after he cut off his left ear um, but I took the self-portraits and then I flipped them in the computer in order to create what I, was going to be the correct way around because in a self-portrait you would paint in a mirror and so you'd have the mirror image whereas uh, this portrait uh, of Van Gogh um, is the correct way around and then what I've done is I've flipped that as well, uh, it's by John Russell, uh, I've flipped that as well in order to help create balance in the sculpture. Uh, also using family images of his brother Theo uh, to help with the bone structure and the lips, uh, that's Theo as a, as a young man and uh, as an older man and uh, Van Gogh again as a child. So I've amalgamated these images, I've looked for a couple that are closest to him uh, uh, in terms of uh, uh, common features, uh, the, the features occur most, uh, reoccur most commonly and uh, I base these also on uh, measurements taken from pictures of him as a young man and uh, so this is the uh, resulting bust which I will then put a beard on and um, hair but I thought it was interesting for people to see the sculpture before that, um, that, was, that was done. Um, I also used um, a skull and anatomical models to help create um, the sculpture, looking at the bone structure within the, um, within the images and um, understanding where the sinews of the, uh, of the muscles in the face were. And uh, another aspect um, uh, that's probably the most different is that um, in Van Gogh um, he tends to be looking to the side like this. That's because in his self-portraits he's, uh, he's using a mirror and painting himself looking out to the side but I've got Van Gogh here looking straight forward and so that affects the way the eyeball sits in the face and the muscles on, on the face. Um, so just some of the variety of types of image of, uh, of Van Gogh, uh, another drawing by a contemporary, so using these as, as uh, clues. Uh, this is a good image but this is in his uh, Japanese period and he deliberately painted his eyes in a Japanese style. So it's factors like this that I wanted to uh, accommodate. Um, this one, the, the nose is particularly pointed and long, uh, it's in his Paris period. Uh, and uh, the, the nose is, is a lot broader at the bottom um, but you know others the nose is quite narrow there and uh, quite narrow and bony in that one um, but uh, also quite a contrast between the two noses and faces in those two pictures themselves um, anyway if you uh, research images of Van Gogh I'm sure you'll uh, you'll enjoy uh, enjoy looking at the differences yourselves.
So here we have um, the sculpture, the bust with beard and hair that I've put on. Um, now, um, it's quite tricky with the hair and the beard because different periods of his life he had a different length of beard and different length of hair. The portraits that we normally associate Van Gogh with were when he was in a sanatorium in Saint-Rémy towards the end of his life and um, they're not as representative of his look the rest of his life. So I've tried to keep the hair similar to um, the hair of the rest of his life, yet with an amount of length like he had in his famous portraits in San Um The beard as well, um, sometimes he had a curl up, sometimes it was curling in like that, a different length over the lip. So I've tried to combine these different appearances to give a rounded view of the man. Uh, his eyes, he has a very striking ring around his eyes and very small pupils, so I've tried to capture that. Um, the ear as well, um, I've based on um, uh, the photographs of him as a young man and also his sister's ear, um, because there was a profile picture of his sister which is quite useful uh, to take. Um, I'm not putting any clothes on, um, no collars, because that would define the period of Van Gogh quite specifically. So we're leaving him um, just the bust. So the bust has taken me two and a half weeks to make, but a whole lot of preparation time before. Uh, we've photographed some prints as you can see. Um, I wanted to try and make it quickly in order to capture some of the spirit of Van Gogh's um, he produce a painting a day. Um, so it's the energy and life that Van Gogh had in his work. And uh, some of the marks I've tried to make like his brushwork uh, in his Paris period. I've also made it in a traditional kind of um, 19th century style of bust. Um, to fit with the era he, uh, he was from. Okay, this is the final cast of the Vincent van Gogh bust.